What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, you don't need me to tell you that AI is absolutely everywhere nowadays. Anywhere from your cell phone to your smartwatch, even the IoT devices that you have all over your house, they're all integrated with AI. We were even using ChatGPT from a car dealership out in Fresno, California. You know the little chat box that pops up in the bottom of the screen that says, can I help you? Well, a lot of times, that's an AI bot. AI has become so prevalent that I'm actually hearing stories about people getting insurance claims denied because the AI bot that the insurance company uses said it should be declined. And it wasn't even for like cosmetic surgery or elective surgery or anything like that. It was for a common physical. And when the person called the insurance company to complain and be like, hey, what's going on here? They're like, well, we'll have to run it through the bot again maybe it'll change its mind. Now, I heard that story through social media and it was a cool story, but you know, who knows if it's even true, right? I mean, hell, AI could have generated that story by itself and pretty much filmed the video on it. AI can do just about anything. And that's the problem. AI is getting so sophisticated and so believable that it's so hard to tell the difference between real and fiction nowadays. So today we're gonna take a look at AI and figure out why it's ruining everything. Let's go. Now, the topic of AI taking over the world is not a new one at all. I mean, it's been a favorite of science fiction writers basically since the invention of science fiction. I mean, look at 2001 A Space Odyssey, Westworld, The Matrix. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI. A singular consciousness that spawned an entire race of machines. There have got to be thousands of TV shows, movies, books, comic books, all of them talking about how AI is going to take over the world. But for the moment, that doesn't really seem like that's what's going on. Right now, AI is kind of at a slippery slope. Now, right now, I can take AI and make a picture of a capybara wearing a hoodie like this, or a capybara wearing a bear hoodie like this. Well, that leads us to the question of, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Now, those images were created using Midjourney, which is a Discord-based AI image generating bot. And I guess it begs the question is, am I taking a job away from an actual digital creator? Now, as a digital content creator, shoddy one at best, but still, as a content creator, I really got to ask myself these questions when things like this pop up. And the way I see it, it's still a super slippery slope. AI is kind of having the same effect on me, at least, as CGI used to have. Now, when CGI first came out, you know, back in the 90s, it was super, super obvious what was real and what was fake. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some movies that were extremely good, even back then. Like, watching Jurassic Park, that is still absolutely stunning, even to this day. So one of the real problems you run into with CGI is now you really don't know what's real and fake anymore. Four years ago, the guys over at Core Corridor Digital made a really cool video showing a CGI version of the Boston Dynamics robot. Now, these guys are basically a YouTube channel that makes CGI stuff, so they're not like a major movie studio or anything, but they were able to deliver a really, really convincing CGI robot. Now, that was four whole years ago, and since then, basically, we've been able to use AI to fix a lot of the minutia that people would be able to use to determine if something's actually real or not. So now in 2024, when Boston Dynamics releases a new robot called Atlas, I'm watching the video and I'm sitting there like, is this real? Now this new robot moves so weirdly and it's got just so much detail that my brain immediately said, this is not real. And this is where the problem lies. Now, I happen to be the kind of person that if I see something that's unbelievable, I tend to not believe it. But that can't be said for everyone. Now, I'm sure we all have a friend or a family member that pretty much just believes anything they see on their social media. And with how social media can become basically a confirmation bias echo chamber, it's really kind of scary to think that people are just seeing things and believing them just on face value. And we all know how easily you can use AI to basically recreate an entire person from scratch. I mean, take me for example, I've been on YouTube for over a year, so there's plenty of source material to pretty much copy everything about me. My entire like list, my voice, everything. And we all know nobody needs that. So obviously, the more sophisticated the AI gets and the more believable the stuff is, the more misinformation is going to be flowing absolutely everywhere. But you know what's not misinformation is this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. You don't need artificial intelligence when you have actual intelligence like the folks over at PCBWay. If you've got a PCB that you want printed, those guys can take care of you. They have so many different options when it comes to PCBs. You can change the silk screen color, you can change the solder mask, you can change almost anything. But it's not just PCBs, they can 3D print, CNC, sheet metal fabricate, so many more things they can do for you. And don't forget that module store, they've got a ton of cool tech in there. 
I literally just spend time scrolling through the module store to see what's new. So head on down to PCBWay.com to see what PCBWay can do for you. Thanks as always PCBWay for the continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. Now another place where AI is ruining everything is in the world of tech gadgets. Now I'm sure you've all seen the media storm around the Rabbit A1 and the Humane AI pin. Now the Humane AI pin is a pin that goes on yourself, I guess, and it projects a screen onto your hand and then it uses AI to recognize your surroundings? Yeah, saying it out loud makes me wonder why this thing ever actually got off the ground. And then the Rabbit R1 is kind of like a cell phone or more like an old iPod form factor device that has a camera that's supposed to tell you what your surroundings are based on AI. I mean, this thing's got a camera and I can have AI tell me what's going on in my surroundings too, and I already own this guy. I mean, they both had wildly successful Kickstarters, but I mean, don't get me started on Kickstarters after the whole Cyber Pro fiasco. I mean, their Discord got taken over by bots like weeks ago and they haven't said a word about it. So those guys are gone. Anyway, I digress. So I guess that leads to the question is why did these companies and these products fail so spectacularly? I mean, the Rabbit R1 was designed by Teenage Engineering, which makes some pretty cool, arguably expensive, but pretty cool stuff. Well, I believe it's because these companies so desperately want to catch the AI bandwagon right in the beginning. Because yeah, in the tech industry, most people subscribe to the idea that if you're not first, you're last. So that just leads these companies to try to release products that are, first of all, not solving a problem anybody has, but are also completely half-baked. So that leads them to do the same thing that AAA video game companies have been doing for years. They've decided that it's completely okay to release a product that's horribly broken and just promise to fix it in the future. I'm looking at you, Cyberpunk and Fallout 76. I was selected for the closed beta for Fallout 76, and when I first played that, I was shattered at how bad that game was. Both of those games did get better over time. In some cases, it took years, but at this point, they're both super playable. And hey, maybe that'll be the case when it comes to the Humane AI pin or the Rabbit R1. Although I don't really see any situation where that Humane AI pin is gonna be worth the $700. You never know. And I do actually have a pre-order out on a Rabbit R1 just from morbid curiosity. So then I guess we gotta ask ourselves is what effect does this have on the industry at large? So now you have two companies that did have pretty decent reputations going into it, releasing products that completely flop. Well, if you're an up and coming tech company, you may not want to enter that space anymore because you don't want the same thing to happen to you. So that just leaves the major players like Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon. They're the only ones left in the space now. They have the resources in the wallet to invest huge amounts of resources into this stuff. They already have the computing power. In a lot of cases, they already have the hardware to really dig themselves even deeper into our everyday lives. We already have phones and watches and IoT devices and smart things, all sorts of stuff, and they're all feeding these huge corporations AI. I mean, hell, Facebook already knows if someone's pregnant, in a lot of cases, even before they do, based solely off of their browsing habits. And honestly, it seems like without some sort of government regulation or oversight, there's really no limit to how deep into our personal lives these companies can get. Because yeah, Facebook only exists as a company at this point to farm your personal data and sell it to the highest bidder. And speaking of Facebook, that actually brings us to kind of the other side of AI. I love me some rabbit holes and the dead internet theory is an awesome rabbit hole to go down. In fact, if you'd like to see me do an entire video on the dead internet theory, leave a comment down below. I'd love to do it. Now the dead internet theory states that basically majority of the traffic on the internet are just bots conversing with other bots. Honestly, the more I look into it, it certainly seems plausible. There are thousands of groups over Facebook and all the other social media platforms that really exemplify this. In these groups, it's just image after image after image, all AI generated, all increasingly wacky and kind of creepy. And under all those images are hundreds and hundreds of comments from bots. And when bots create images and bots comment on the images, it creates an echo chamber, which which is really kind of weird, honestly. You see, most of these AIs work off of what's called a large language model. You see, AI is effectively dumb. There's not a single thought going on inside there, just like my cat Neville. Now, what a large language model AI does is it simply tries to statistically figure out the best output for any given input. It then relies on positive or negative reinforcement from the user in order to determine what's good and what's bad. Now, in a lot of cases, it can actually do this on its own, scraping back through the internet. That's, again, how most of these AI models work now. But it's this training and the large amounts of data that are basically scrubbed by these AI, that's where the magic is. Now, that's also its Achilles heel. You see, if you continually feed the AI large language model the incorrect information or bad data, it's gonna start believing it that's good data. And that's where you get images like this 
and this. Now when a bot creates an AI image and then a ton of bots give it positive reinforcement no matter what it is, it's gonna create some really weird stuff. And since the bot keeps getting likes and comments, it's gonna statistically think that it's doing the right thing. So instead of the large language model getting smarter, it's just getting exponentially stupider. So of course that begs the question of how do we stop it? I mean, from a user standpoint, I don't think there's really a ton you can do. I guess you could report the pages, but it's really gonna be up to the company itself to do something about it. And obviously people are making money off of this too. So bots driving engagement for other bots equals money. And anytime there's easy money on the table, there's no self-regulation. And now of course AI isn't all bad. I mean, I use Google Labs to search for things and like 80% of the time it's spot on. Now again, that's only 80%. There's another 20% where it's not right. Now, of course, as I said before, I pretty much never take anything at face value and I always try to validate my data. But of course, AI does streamline the process and if it's right, that's awesome. And as AI is gonna get more and more powerful and more and more convincing, it's really up to all of us to stay vigilant. I mean, we've already begun our slide into idiocracy. Welcome to Costco, I love you. Welcome to Costco, I love you. So where do things go from here? On one hand, AI is getting smarter and sleeker to the point where it's really hard to know what's real anymore. And on the other hand, AI is getting dumber and louder to the point where we can barely even recognize what it's doing anymore. One hand is evolving at the speed of light while the other one's imploding like a dying star based on its own feedback loop. It's such a weird juxtaposition that it kind of feels like a social commentary all at the same time. I mean, at this point, it seems like this whole thing's kind of bigger than us. So unless we all just stop using AI entirely, all we can do is sit down and figure out where this train takes us. Hey, I want to thank each and every one of you that made it this far in this video. I know it was a little bit of a different format, but it was really something I wanted to talk about. Do you want to see more videos like this that aren't tutorials? Leave a comment down below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.